Hello and welcome back to the Lobo Designs channel. My name is Heather Lynn. I'm the owner of Lobo Designs and I'm here today with a quick tutorial to show you how I made this cake topper design with a stencil looking font so that I can use just one piece of acrylic and I don't have to layer these letters on top. There'll be a cutout inside of the black acrylic that I'm using for the cake topper. So what I mean is I'm going to walk through showing you how to make these breaks inside of a font that has a compound path meaning the letter has another shape inside of it. So B, R, A, all the letters with quote unquote holes in the center. You wanna make sure that you attach those so that when you're doing them as cutouts, the center doesn't fall out and they don't start looking wonky. So I'm going to walk you through how to set that up for any font of your choosing and how to make this cake topper design for a client or for yourself. So let's get started. We're going to start out by creating a rectangle and the text that we'll be using for this design. So you can choose any font that you'd like. I will be using the font that's called Notes and I'm going to be using the Type tool to enter the words Happy Birthday. So T as in Type or you can go over here into the Type tool menu and you're just going to click anywhere on your artboard and type the words that you'll be using for your cake topper. I'm then going to select all of my text. You can either highlight and select all or you can hit Command or Control A for select all. And I'm going to go over here into the character menu and pick the font that I'm going to be using. I'm just going to enter the name and click on it here. So I'm going to be using this font using the selection tool. I'm going to get away from that. And then I'm going to select the rectangle tool and make the rectangle that I'll be using. Rectangle tool is M as in Mary on your keyboard, or you can actually go over into your menu here and click on the rectangle tool. If you don't see it, you can right click on any of these tools and it will show you the full menu. You may be seeing the last one that you used instead of the rectangle tool. So if you don't see the rectangle tool, that's where it is. It's hidden inside this sub menu. So once you have the rectangle tool activated, you're going to click anywhere on your artboard. You can either click and drag or you can click once and enter the measurements, which is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to click once. I'm going to be doing a four inch width and a 2.2. Actually, let's just do a two inch height. Make it easy. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the selection tool V. I'm going to bring these corners in by hovering over this little circle. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it. See this little circle here? I'm just clicking on that and I'm dragging that in. I'm gonna to go to a 0.2 inch and that will work for me. And while I have this highlighted, I'm going to do Shift X to switch it from fill to stroke. So now all we have to do is put this in the center and create the stencil font cutouts inside of the letters with compound shapes inside of them. So we're going to drag this over and I'm going to make this, let's just say three inches wide and see how that goes. That looks like it should work. We could probably make it a little bit wider, but we'll leave that just for now. We're going to take this text and you're going to do command shift O or control shift O if you are on windows or you can right click and you can do create outlines. So command shift O or control shift O. Now we have our outlines here. We didn't add a stroke to this or else we would have to expand the stroke. Just a reminder, I have a tutorial on that if you need me to walk you through the steps of expanding your strokes. But for this project, we don't need to do that because we're just using the font as it is. So I'm going to now select everything on my artboard with the selection tool, I'm going to use the align panel up here to center it vertically and horizontally, just to make sure that we are in the center. There's a little bit of extra space on the side here. If you want to, you can bring that in on either side, and then you can just do a quick recentering again, just to make sure that nothing hopped out of place. But now we have the overall shape of what we're going to be using for the cake topper. And the next step, we're going to create the cutouts that are inside of the letters that have holes in the middle. The way that I do this is I use the rectangle tool to create a small rectangle that I can then use to knock out a space in each of the letters that needs it. And I don't do it for every single letter. I do it for the letters that are different. So I would knock this out of the A here, and then I would use a copy of that A to replace this one down here. That way I don't have to do it twice. Same for the P, I would knock it out of this one, and then we're gonna make a copy of the new one to carry over here, just to save yourself some time. So I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm gonna show you how I create these knockouts. 
zooming all the way in. I'm holding down option on my keyboard and scrolling with my mouse. You can also zoom in down here in the corner if you need to. I'm going to be using the rectangle tool, which again is M on your keyboard. And I'm just going to create a tiny rectangle about 0.02 wide. You can make it a little wider if you'd like. It's entirely up to you, but I'm going to go with 0.02. The height doesn't really matter at this point because this is just to create the break in the letter. So I'm just going to let go and let that box be created. And I'm going to change that to fill. So I'm going to hit shift X on my keyboard and swap that over to a black fill just so that we don't have that thick stroke on there and we can really see where this is gonna land. So I'm using my selection tool. I'm making sure I have this little rectangle selected and I'm doing Control C or Command C on my keyboard, or you can go up into Edit, Copy. You're gonna make a copy of this rectangle because you're going to use it a few times. So you just wanna make sure that you always store a copy of this extra one, or you can hold down the Option key when you're clicking and dragging to make a duplicate copy of it and just keep it off to the side. Whatever you choose, just make sure that you pay attention if you are making a duplicate copy because you'll want to make sure that you delete that copy out of your design before you send it to your laser. So I'm going to get rid of this since I have a copy of it already. And I'm going to bring this over to the P first. The reason being, I am about to rotate this one for the A. So I don't want to lose the copy that is already straight up. I could always straighten it again, but it's just an extra step. So I'm keeping two copies of this and this one I'm going to rotate. So I'm going to zoom in. I have this rectangle here and what I try to do is I just rotate it so that it matches the curvature of the line that I'm matching up with. It takes a little bit of adjusting and again it just needs to be close. If you ever come across a spot where you can't rotate it enough you can zoom in. I'm just rotating this a little bit more and then we're going to do this as a knockout. So right now I have this in place. I'm going to select this right now, which is the entire font. Zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. I'm selecting all of the happy birthday and I'm ungrouping. So command shift G, control shift G. You can go over here and click ungroup. You can right click and do ungroup. There are a whole different bunch of options that you can do the same thing in Adobe Illustrator. My favorite is obviously the hotkeys, which again, command shift G or control shift G will ungroup this. So now each individual letter is on its own and we don't have to worry about doing a knockout and removing the rest of the letters when we do so. So I'm going to zoom back into here just to the A. I have the A selected along with this little box. So we're selecting both of those together and we're going to do minus front. So over here on the left hand side in the Pathfinder panel, it's this box right here, the second one in, you're just going to click minus front and it's going to knock that space out. Now, if you zoom in and you're a perfectionist like I am, you will notice that there are extra notes that got created right here because we didn't divide directly on that line. And it's really easy to get rid of those. You can hit the minus key on your keyboard and that's the delete anchor point tool. And then all you need to do is get rid of these little, little anchors that created by clicking on them one time. So click delete, delete, delete. And now we have a straight line again and we don't have to worry about those little points because your laser will pick those up and then you'll have a little jagged mark there in your cake topper, which is not ideal. So now we're going to move over to the P and the same thing here. We're going to make sure we have a copy of this box on hand. We're going to select this and move it over as close as we can to the left hand side. We're going to select them both together and do a knockout. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clean up these little jagged edges by hitting the minus key on my keyboard, which is the delete anchor point tool. It looks like this in your menu. It's a little pen tip with a minus sign up top. You're going to click, 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 click and get rid of that. Now we have a straight line. And like I said earlier, we have two P's and we want them to be exactly the same. So what I do for this is I take this P. I hold down option and shift and I shift it. I shift an extra copy over until it lines directly up with the other one. And then I go in and I take the one that doesn't have the cutout and I delete it. So I'm going to do that one more time. We have the P I'm going to hold down option and shift so that I'm creating a duplicate copy and staying in line with that. I'm going to make sure it hovers over the original one, let go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the one that doesn't have the break in it and delete. So now we have two of the exact replicas of that P and they're not different when you do the knockout with the little rectangle. So now we need to do the same thing for the B. So I'm going to zoom in here. We're going to do command V for paste, or you can go up into the edit menu and hit paste. I'm going to drag this over, line it up as much as I can in the middle here, select them both, do a knockout. And then I am personally going to go in here and get rid of this and this 
And I think that. Yep, so now we have a straight line there. I'm going to do the same thing for the R. Hover over here, do a knockout, minus key, delete, 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 and delete, and delete. There we go. And then, as I said before, we need to do it for the D, and then the A we can copy from above. So Command V to paste that little rectangle back. Going to highlight over here, do a knockout, and then I'm just going to get rid of this little point there. Now the D is done, and we can grab a copy of this A, hold down Option, do not hold down Shift because you're coming all the way down to this line. So you're just holding down Option, clicking and dragging, hovering over, making sure you don't have that selected. Now you're going to select the one that doesn't have the break and hit Delete. So now we have all of our letters that needed the little break added to them done. And our next step is to turn this into a cake topper. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this rectangle, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to arrange, and I'm going to send it to the back. Now we're going to select everything together, the text and the rectangle, and you're going to do Pathfinder minus front. So now we have the cutouts done. I'm personally going to change this to a red stroke and I'm going to make it a 0.25 stroke. And that is the cutout part of the cake topper. So the only thing that we have left to add is the steak at the bottom. Inside info, I use a pre-saved document that I already have this little steak saved in. And I also have this saved for when I have to show my clients how tall and wide their cake topper is when I'm giving them a visual mock-up. So I have this stored just off to the side so that I don't have to go through the steps of creating this steak every time. It doesn't take long. It just saves me a little bit of effort. Um, but I'm going to show you, I do that for mine, but I'm going to walk you through how to actually create this steak in this tutorial on your own. So what you do is you're going to zoom in. I always zoom in as much as I can just so that I can see what I'm working with and I tend to get a little bit more control in Adobe Illustrator when I'm zoomed in than when I'm zoomed further out. You're going to again create another rectangle with the M key on your keyboard or the rectangle tool again over here in your menu. You're going to click anywhere on your artboard and what I'm going to use is 0.2 wide and 3 inches in height. Yours can be different if you choose to have a wider stake or if you want a different shape, but this is the one that I use for most of mine. Sometimes I use two if I think the piece is gonna be pretty heavy for the cake just to make sure it doesn't fall over. But for this tutorial, we're gonna do 0.2 inches wide and three inches high and we're gonna click OK. Now the next thing that you wanna do on your rectangle is you wanna add an anchor point for the point at the bottom so that you can drag it out and bring it to a point so that it goes through the cake properly. And you're going to do that with the add anchor point tool. So you can either hit the plus key on your keyboard or you can go over here into the add anchor point tool, which is the pen tip with the plus sign above it. You wanna click on that and you're just going to go over the point of the rectangle where you wanna add an anchor point, which is directly in the middle and click. Now there's an extra anchor point there. I'm going to use my selection tool to click anywhere else and make sure that I do not have this selected. And then I'm going to use my direct selection tool, which is this one up here with the full arrow, is the A key on your keyboard. I'm going to hover over until I find that anchor point that I just made. I'm gonna hold down shift on my keyboard and I'm going to bring that point down. So now we have this stake. We have the cake topper and we just have to unite the two together. So I'm going to bring this up here make them overlap. I'm going to center them to make sure that the stake is in the middle and then I'm going to unite them. And unite is the key over here. I'll undo that in case you missed it. Unite is the key over here in your Pathfinder menu with the two squares that are shaped together. Once you do that, they'll be united. And then you can export this design as an SVG to be cut on your laser all in one piece without having to worry about the center of your letters falling out. The export process is easy. If you're not familiar with how to export an SVG from Adobe Illustrator, I'll walk through it really quickly. You're gonna to wanna to go up into File, Save As, or you can do Command Shift S as in Save. You're going to go into this format menu down here and pick SVG, and then you're going to click Save. Make sure you have it in the right location that you wanna save it. And what's most important when you're saving SVGs is this screen right here. SVG profile should be 1.0, type should be SVG, image location. I set to embed for this file, there isn't an image, so we wouldn't have to worry about that, but I set my default to embed images. 
Decimal places should be set to three. If you don't have this set to three, sometimes you'll find that your lines move around for intricate designs. And then you also wanna make sure that responsive is not checked. If responsive is checked, your design will act wonky when it goes into your laser software. And then you'll just click okay. I'm gonna click cancel because I already have a copy of this. But that is your design. So once it is said and done, it will look like this on black acrylic and this is what your file will look like. And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel free to join us in the Glow Create group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate and Adobe Illustrator beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I'll holla at you later.